Hello. Oh, we've got to button this up today. I'm waiting for the glue to dry on these pins, but I've got it down, down there. I'm taking no chances that do not try this at home. I found a connector that works. So for an old woman I have lying about. I've got the mains voltage going into there. The 3 amp fuse in there, I couldn't find the 500 milliamp fuse to put in. Um, whatever inline fuse you've got on this thing, you need to put a 500 milliamp fuse on your inline holder. I can maybe put one up here. I mean, we'll do that before I power it up for any other time. That goes into a power breaker. And then I've got an RCD out in the box out there as well. First sign of promising. Power it up. It's satisfying. One puff the speaker. And we've got 12 volts there. Got some phenomenal voltage coming out of that power supply after the capacitor. It goes up to about 20 volts. Which is why I put a little heat sink on that. You could probably do it putting a big ass heat sink on that. So, that's the first step of this. Speaker goes into the into lead. I've not connected a switch up yet to trigger it. The custom board is over there. We'll attach that in a minute and see if it'll run on a track mode. Right, sports connected back up. Not connected to the switch yet. Let's wait for a few minutes in this video. She happens. It's nice and stable. She doesn't appear to be heating up any. Nope, she cold. Well, she's looked warm, but she's not hot. Got a bigger transformer input on it. it. It doesn't take a great deal of load. You can install the bigger transformer if you want. It's easy enough to do. You just take that one off and run two flyleys out to it. Connections will all be the same. It's the Velman MK1 and says kit. Ah, oh, there you go. Wrong speaker, so it sounds a little dull. But it's connected up as it should be. Top pin speaker positive. Middle pin is trigger. Lower pin is ground. And on the right you've got live and neutral. There's an earth pin there as well, but it goes absolutely nowhere on the board. But at the margin I've got the earth pin connected somewhere else. I know that from seeing photographs, the original plug that goes in here has an earth pin. Um, I've glued these little standoffs onto the original board and I've also marked all the part numbers down so you can follow in future and I know that is a rusty mess there but that still works. Why bother removing it if it still works? Solder joints are good, it's only surface rust. You don't want the thing to look too new. You want it to have a lot of character, man. You might... And I see a lot of this was guesswork. That's not burning me in any shape or form. It's not getting hot. That's the right one for it. And if you connect the voltage, if you connect the multimeter across the capacitor, you get, what, nearly 21 volts out of that. So, this is all unfortunately transmitted as heat. Even that's not getting hot, so it's not driving a lot of current. That's a one amp regulator. Now, as you know from the previous part of this video, and it's got to be about October now I've done this, um, I had to downrate the voltage on this from 15 to 12 volts. If you wanted to put it back to 15 volts, you're going to have to do some serious jiggery pokery on there. You may have to add a wee PCB somewhere for a converter card because to drop the voltage down a little bit because that's the regulator for this is that little tiny part there. It's a miniature regulator. Uh, I've cut the erase and record buttons off 
and I'll probably epoxy over them as well so you can't er erase a record by accident. And we don't want us to suddenly record somebody taking a dump or something because of condensation or whatever. Um, if you want to disable a track mode, see that little wire link there beside that standoff? You just cut that open, a track mode will never run again. All their track mode is a 555 that's getting reset. Runs at about four minutes. It sounds exactly the same as the main mode. So I don't know why you bother trying to try mode. Maybe in an arcade, whatever, but I don't know if that would annoy you. It certainly annoys me. And annoys everybody else in the household as well when it's running. Be glad to see. I'd be glad never to hear the tune Oranges and Lemons ever again. I mean, I was thinking about sending. Send, <laughs> I was thinking about sending you with a different chip in it. Playing Guns N' Roses instead. But. Uh, I couldn't show that off. I don't think you'd appreciate that. Playing Guns N' Roses when your machine fires an egg at a chicken's bum. I, th <laughs> I think that would be too much if it was playing. You could be minor knock knock in heaven's door or something like that. That would be a bit... No, I think you would literally come up looking for me for that one. <laughs> um, I'm not going to bother putting a switch on it. I've tested it and it triggers fine. You might want to put a little capacitor across the switch to absorb any bounce because the current levels do go up a wee bit. When I measure that using an av using an ammeter across this and across where if you recall I had my big meter and my lab site power supply running it and I was getting surge current from maybe an amp, maybe 700 milliamp when you first triggered it with the switch. But I don't think that'll, ru that'll happen when you've got the proper transformer. Yeah, that's fine. That's... Yeah, I think that'll be okay. I mean, I'll give you a bigger transformer anyway, and I, I strongly recommend that you put an inline fuse across it. Now, the way you could do that is you could lift that diode bridge out of there and put a 500 milliamp fuse at that point. Because what that will then do is the 500 milliamp fuse will then transmit. It will then, what am I saying, transmit? It will take the load. And you can mount it on the side there somewhere, then it will take the load out to the capacitor. What you would do is you put an inline fuse holder there. Little ceramic one. You run a wire for the, those two diodes. Lift them out of the board, run a wire for them, over it there, then run it back to the capacitor, job done. But I mean, I'm sure that's the right one. It doesn't feel like it's overheating. It's getting a little bit warm, but it's not overheating in any shape and form. I think it'll be just fine. But I've got a. Uh, where is it? You can, if you want, use this one. Now what you would do is take that off and fly, put fly leads on it, fly lead it all out. And then, mains voltage up the top, and your 12 volts down the bottom, and then that would be you done. Now you would do is you set your centre taps on those two pins there. Mains voltage up the top there, I mean this, that's a 500 milliamp transformer. This is a one, one and a half amp. See the problem I've got is I do not know what that was simply don't know I know it's open it's no good whatsoever yeah I could it's, cer it's certainly no good for this application because let's say we downrated this to ooh getting a wee shock off that there I must be touching the mains lead somewhere ow yeah certainly don't try that at home don't try and kill yourself like I just did Got a shock there off it. That's why it's important that you that you know what you're doing with these things. I mean, yeah, I say that, and I just gave myself a wee bit of a shock. I must have just touched the corner of the coil there. If I happened to be touching stuff metal on the other side, they wouldn't be talking to you anymore. Just goes to show you, even the people who know what they're doing can still be zapped. 
Oh, it's, it's rock steady at 12.2. Coming at that regular. So that's having no problem with the heat. Let's see if that's having. Getting warm, but not hot. So I think it'll be just fine, to be honest with you. I think that'll be absolutely just fine. I mean, be. The electronic things do get a little bit warm when they're running. I mean, I've had this one for an hour now. It's doing its magic. So. We'll just have to continue the project when it gets back to the owner and he can decide how to wire it up and that's it for this one I don't have the little fuse holder I'm talking about or I would do it myself but I'll provide instructions for him to do it and yeah Oh yeah, before I forget, uh, let's see if I can see them. Those two resistors under there take the whole load of everything. So I would recommend maybe changing them out to one or two watt units. They're holding their own right now. I mean, it, it only runs intermittently. It runs for about four seconds, which isn't going to heat anything up. The power supply, the transformer, Runs all the time because the amp's powered up all the time, which I think is a stupid design. They should have done this through a relay system or something where only the transformer run until power was applied to through the trigger and then the amp was provided with power. But uh, hey, well, I'd imagine they would get it right if they built another one. Uh, yeah, volume controls on the left there. Provided it with a little knob for yourself, that's why there's no stand off there so you can reach it. So you don't have to reach it with your hands and there's nothing, there's no nasty voltages up there so you can't kill yourself touching that. That's all low power. So bye for now. It's a very interesting project, a difficult one. I've had to do everything through guesswork and drawing diagrams myself and listening to that distracting me every 45 minutes when I've been testing things and God knows what but she's working I hope you enjoy it I hope it brings your machine back to life I mean it's just unfortunate that we didn't have the original chip to fit in there but ah we figured out something to do with it all right bye for now